So in the previous video we have uh, talked we have spoken about uh, how to take inputs to command line method and in this video we'll be talk actually talking about how to take inputs uh, during the runtime of the program and this type of taking input is actually widely used uh, by all the programmers or it must actually be preferred uh, to be used by you all right so let's go ahead and do it let me create a new file over here and uh, let's go ahead and copy the template of this so I'll just copy all that code and I'll just go paste it in the new file and I don't need all this stuff so yeah this is basically the template and let me save this as a dot java file in the folder that I have created so I'll just go to learn programming taking input and I'll save this file as uh, runtime input input dot java right right so there we go there we go I have the uh, okay I'll just change the name of the class as well I'll just save it to run time run time input. right so I have the template for writing my Java program so let's go ahead and actually uh, see how we can actually take input from the user during the execution or during the runtime of a program so when it comes to Java you will have to use uh, external classes to, you know to to take input from the user during the runtime so don't worry when I said external classes uh, you, you you don't have to think that it's going to be a complex process because it's a very simple process the first thing you have to do is first import these classes into your program so what you need to do is uh, you have to import a particular class uh, which is stored in a particular package so basically when I say package a package is nothing but a collection of classes all right so uh, you know in order to bring or in order to include a particular class or a particular you know set of classes inside a package you will have to actually import these things to your program and in order to import these things you have to type in or you have to use the keyword import in the Java so this is the Java reserved keyword and it is used import uh, class or a particular set of classes into your program so what we are what what class we are going to uh, include to get or to take the values or to take inputs from the user during the runtime well we are going to input a class named as scanner class which is defined or which is actually stored in the java.util package so in order to import that class you have to type in import space java dot util util stands for utility by the way and then another dot followed by the name of the class which I've told you is scanner and you have to uh, you know oh shit sorry you have to also terminate it with a semicolon so basically java dot util is actually the package over here uh, which is a Java pre-built uh, or a default package which comes obviously when you're installing Java you don't have to download it or install it on your computer it comes it comes by default so in this Java java.util package we have a class named as scanner which we will be using to take input from the user during the runtime of the program so once you actually import this class uh, into your program you can go ahead and you can use this class however you wish but in order to use a class in Java or in any object oriented programming language well we'll be talking about object oriented programming in an upcoming video lesson so you don't have to worry if you don't know what the hell that means well in order to use a class in your program you have to actually create a an object alright you have to actually create an object of that class and then you can use that object to you know to do functionalities which is performed by that particular class that we are talking about so in the same way uh, for this scanner class as well you have to first create a an object all right so that we can actually use the scanner class so in order to create an object this is a syntax to create an object in Java so you have to type in scanner which is the name of the class and followed by the name of the object so you can give the name of the object as you wish just like how you name a variable in the same way you, you name an object well an object is nothing but it's also a variable but uh, the data type the data type of this variable is nothing but the 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 class that you are using here so i'll say scanner followed by i'll say i'll name the object as in and then equal to and here you have to use a keyword new all right scanner in is equal to new followed by scanner and then open and closed parentheses just like that so what we have done here is we have created a new object in of the class scanner so I'm, I'm using the keyword new to create an object this keyword new is used uh, 
uh, in a java program to actually create uh, an object for a class and also after creating an object you also have to you know mention something inside this open and close parenthesis you have to type in system dot n in this uh, open and close parenthesis and yeah this statement is uh, what will enable us to take inputs from the user so now we can just go on and take input from the user during the runtime of the program so let's say for example I want to take an input from the user so first of all I will ask the user to type in a number or type in an input right so I'll say system dot out dot println I'll say uh, enter your input right so basically what I'm doing with this print statement is I'm actually asking the user to enter an input right and now at this point the user is going to be uh, entering their input right so we actually have to take that input from the user we have to collect that input from the user so in order to collect that input from the user first of all you obviously define a variable which you will be using to store the input from the which will be taken from the user so let's say I want to you know like uh, take an input which is of integer data type so I'll say int inp so I'll say int inp so basically int is the data type and the inp is the variable right so int inp equal to and then in order to take an integer data type input from the user you have to say the name of the object of the scanner class in my case it's in dot next int right so this next int guess what it is well you can see you can say that by this open and close parenthesis that this next int is nothing but the function you know it's a function and which class does this function belong to well it's obvious it's it belongs to the scanner class because we are actually using the object of this class to invoke this function over here so next int is actually the function of a scanner class which is which we use to take an integer type input from the user input from the user all right so uh, int inp is equal to int dot next int and you don't need to give you don't need actually you don't need to actually give any any parameters to this uh, next int function so you can just let it be as usual so now we have we are actually taking an integer data type uh, uh, input from the user and now let's go ahead and print out the input so I'll say system dot out dot println and I'll say your input is and then I'll print out INP right there so yeah that's it uh, that's how that's how you actually take input uh, you know by using the scanner class uh, in Java and uh, scanner class is obviously not the only way to take the input you can also use input stream reader and buffered reader and then you can see data stream reader I don't remember the name of that class but yeah there are different uh, different ways different classes different uh, default pre-built Java classes we can use to take input from the user but I think implementing this scanner class you know taking input through this scanner class is a little bit easier than other classes so I'm going to I'm teaching you about this uh, scanner class but if you want to uh, know other ways to take input from user in your program during the runtime you can go, go ahead and Google and you can uh, you can get to know about other classes as well but anyways let's go ahead and uh, compile this program so I'll say Java C uh, runtime input dot Java right so no errors at all so I'll say Java and run time run time input so I'm just going to run the program and there you go you can see that it says enter your input and right after it says enter your input it's actually it actually paused the program like the program has not yet ended as you could see and uh, it is not also printing any other statement it actually paused right there some somewhat like it actually got blocked right there that is because this statement in dot next end it actually blocks the execution of the program which means it the program will not resume or it will not continue until the user types in something or in other words until the user gives some input so if the user doesn't give any input if the user doesn't use his keyboard or type any key on his keyboard this is going to be forever it's going to be blocked forever so the user has to type anything if you if you don't want to give any input you can type an enter which means a blank input but anyway the point is 
you know, the user has to give an input and the program will be blocked or it will be paused until the user gives an input. So let me give an input. So I'm, I'm, give, I'm taking an integer type uh, input. So I'll be take, typing an integer type value as a 67, right? And hit enter. And there you go. It says your input is 67. So yeah, that's how you give inputs. Uh, or you, you take inputs from the user using the scanner class. And in the same way, if I want to deal with a string data type inputs, I'll say string INP equal to, and instead of this uh, next int, I will have to use the function next line. So uh, this next line function actually, you know, actually takes a string data type input from the user. So let's go ahead and try it out. Try this out. I'll compile this and I'll run this. And now I can actually, you know, go ahead and uh, run. I mean, give string data type values. So I'll say, "Hello, man. This is a test input. Something like that." Then I'm going to hit enter, and there you go. It says your input is "Hello, man. This is the test input." And one thing that is bothering me right now is uh, is with this this enter your input line. You know, after it says enter your input, we want the pointer to actually stay in the same line so that we type the input in this line itself. But it is actually taking us to the next line, so we we are we are having to type the input in the next line. But we don't want to do that because it doesn't look good or whatever, or it bothers me. If it triggers you too, then yeah. So let's go ahead and change that. So in order to actually uh, let the let the pointer know or let the, let your program know that you want the you want to give the input in the same line, you have to remove this ln from the end. So system out print. What this does is that it puts the after printing whatever is inside this uh, parenthesis. What it does is it doesn't go to the next line. So it just stays in the same line. So yeah, that's what it does. Let's go ahead and run this program again. Let's see Java C runtime dot Java Java runtime. So there we go. It actually stayed in the next line. Next line. Sorry, in the same line. It didn't go to the next line. So you can just type in anything, and we will still be able to say stay in the same line as you can see. So yeah, that's what that is the difference between println and print. So println uh, takes the cursor to the next line, whereas print doesn't take the cursor to the next line. So right, that's how you uh, take inputs. And uh, another thing is, if you want to say, let's say you want a double data type, so you say double INP equal to, and instead of this next line, you use the function which says next double right there. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see again. Uh, let's give a double data type value this time. So let's say 34.2, and there we go, 34.2 is printed. So in the same way, based on your you know, based on the data type you want your value or your input to be, you can you can mess 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 with the mess with these functions, and you can take the input of of the data type of your choice or what your program actually needs, right? So yeah, that's all about uh, how to take inputs using the scanner class in the runtime. And also, uh, for example, if you're taking an input in a string data in a string data type you can actually convert it into an integer data type. And I've told you in the previous tutorial how to do that. You use the function integer.parseInt, right? Integer.parseInt to convert a given value into an integer data type. And in the same way, you can use the same for double. Uh, you can say double dot parse double to, con to convert a string or any given value to a double data type, right? So that's how you actually convert things. And uh, yeah, that's I think that's pretty much it. And one more thing is I, I, we also have another function which says in dot next. So there is no in dot next line, in dot next integer or something like that. There is a function which is which just plainly goes in dot next. Now let's see what this function does, right? So I'll just give this as string. Right. So let's go ahead and compile this and execute this and let's see what happens. So Java runtime input, so I'll say hello world as an input. And if you can see here, the input uh, is actually just hello, but we have given hello world there, but it just says hello. So uh, based on this, uh, I think you can understand what this in dot next does. So basically, this in dot next takes the you know, it takes the first string over here, or it takes the first uh, word over here. So if there is a space in between words, then it's going to break the input, which means, uh, you know, right here, hello and world has a space in between each other. So which means that basically means that uh, it's going to just uh, take hello as the input because there's a space in between the input is going to be broken. But if you want to actually change this delimiter, let's say you want, uh, you want, you want uh, this 
you want to replace this space with something like a semicolon or something so that you will be able to take input uh, input based on the semicolon you can just say uh, n dot set del i mitre and then you type in your uh, the character which you want to actually you know do let's try this out I'm not sure if it works uh, but let's try this out okay so there's an error right there uh, variable in of type scanner um, cannot find the symbol I think it's a character data type maybe I don't know in dot set del oh, okay I think it's use delimiter or set delimiter let's try this out and let's see okay I think it's use delimiter okay uh, all right I got it this has to be a string right I think now it should work yeah perfect so let's go ahead and run this out uh, let's say Java run time input and in this input let's say hello uh, hello world and then I'm going to type a semicolon and say this is ignored something like that so this whole string right here is our input and if I just hit enter you can see hello world is taken as the input that is because we have uh, set the delay mitre as a semicolon which means uh, anything after this semicolon is ignored because this whole thing is treated as one one string and this thing is treated as one string right so yeah that's how this uh, next function works and you might be wondering what is actually the use of this next function why would we want to ignore something uh, like this or why would we actually want to use a delay mitre something like that but yeah it all comes to it all makes sense when you actually learn about looping in programming languages and after you learn looping you can actually apply this concept of or this next function uh, in your program and then it makes sense to you but yeah until then yeah that's all you need to know about uh, s uh, taking input using scanner class during the runtime of the program. So in the next video lessons, we'll be moving on to Python.